If I were to ask you what makes a movie good, you'd probably be able to list off tons of things that your favorite movies do well. Convincing acting, a fine-tuned script, breathtaking cinematography, etc. But if I asked you what makes movie trailers good, you might be a little bit lost for words. I actually have a huge amount of respect for movie trailers. They're little snippets of films meant to sell you on the idea and get you to buy a ticket. Different films have different ways of doing this. Action movies and superhero movies usually have really loud music and a lot of flashy jump cuts. Something like an A24 coming of age film will show a lot of character development and somber moments. And a comedy film like the Lego Movie 2 for example will show off some of its best jokes in the trailer. Some comedy movies will show off all of their jokes in the trailer. Not the Lego Movie though. For every movie that you go to see in the theater, you'll see between 3 and 10 movie trailers depending on your theater. And out of all of them that I've seen this year, the best one was for Frozen 2? Frozen 1 was a 2013 animated fantasy movie musical that took the world by storm for years to come. It's also the 6th highest grossing animated film of all time. Its music became a cultural icon that tortured countless parents. Its characters went on to sell billions and billions worth of toys. And every single little girl was Elsa for Halloween that year. Every single one. So yeah, of course Disney was going to make a sequel for this. It was inevitable. But when they did, they were in a really unique position when making a trailer for it. I'll explain what I mean. Right off the bat, the first shot of this trailer is this really dimly lit beach. You can't really tell what's going on, and this could honestly even look live action, but then you see Elsa standing there as determined as ever. You see her turn around and start to take off parts of her dress and her boots, as though she's getting ready for something. This may seem confusing until you see her running towards the wave and using her ice powers to get across. She crashes and it's a blackout. You see Disney's logo and then you immediately see her running and trying right again. This time she's even more determined and she runs even faster, even diving into the wave and climbing up on this rock, like almost like the Little Mermaid. The music gets more and more intense as she's about to take on this huge wave and then she crashes yet again. The music crashes as she crashes, and someone pointed out to me that she falls right as it says this fall, which is kind of, kind of a joke in itself. At this point, the trailer's already halfway over. This little scene in the beginning shows us two things, that this film will likely be dark akin to the first one, if not more so, and that Elsa is continuing to try to evolve her powers rather than conceal them, showing even more character development since the end of the first film. The music picks back up after this and we see Anna, the protagonist from the first film, in a room with hundreds and hundreds of ice crystals. Cut to Kristoff riding his reindeer Sven, looking as though they are determined to get somewhere as an army of reindeer appear behind them. Then we see Anna again looking defeated as she runs off a cliff and makes a leap, hopefully onto something. Then something interesting happens. A chorus starts to sing and it's instantly recognizable as the song that opened the first film. Not any of the lyrical songs, but something choral almost. This is an odd choice and not really as marketable, but it gave me chills. It perfectly sets the tone of going through a scary new world filled with beauty and terror. We then see this little tornado of brown leaves, and this will be important later. Next, the money shot, which gives me chills every time I watch this trailer. Tell me that you don't want this as your wallpaper. It's a beautiful shot and it really shows how far animations come. In addition, just from seeing the facial expressions of these five characters, you can kind of tell what emotions they're going to have throughout the film. Or at least I'm guessing. Maybe all this fall magic is hinting towards a villain or another character having fall elemental powers, like Elsa has winter powers? Maybe there's one with summer powers with spring powers? We'll have to wait and see. And the two at the end of the title actually means that this is the second Frozen film. Then the final shot. 
we see the three main characters walking somewhere as Anna notices something behind them, turns around, pulls out a sword and slashes at it. Now I could be wrong, but the Anna from the first film would never do this and this shows that she's gotten a lot braver since. Then the single word November which actually foreshadows the month that the film comes out in. Now you're probably thinking, that didn't make any sense at all, what did I just watch? Yet, this is why this trailer is perfect. It tells you everything that you need to know and lets the audience fill in the blank. From this footage, the story that I could gather is that Elsa's trying to get better with their powers, and meanwhile a new elemental king or queen emerges, and everyone from the first film must work together to stop them. That's a story I could figure out with no dialogue, no corny jokes in the trailer, and just beautiful cinematography and shots. When I said that Disney was in a unique position with this film, I meant that they can take risks with this trailer without losing a single cent of box office revenue. They could just rely on powerful symbols from the first film, the snowflakes, the choral music, the characters, the ice symbols, uh, to sell their film, and they did so in a really unique way. Now you may argue that this trailer structure isn't super unique in terms of Disney films, having a little scene in the beginning and the montage at the end as they've done the exact same thing with the first Endgame trailer and the first Star Wars Episode 9 trailer. Yet the other trailers have dialogue and or narration, while this one has neither using show don't tell on a whole new level. So I just wrote three whole pages on a trailer for a Disney princess movie. Of course, if you disagree with me and you think that this trailer is bad, that's totally okay and I see why you think that. But for me, this level of storytelling within two minutes is something that all trailers should strive for. Trailers aren't meant to tell the entire story of the film, they're meant to pull you in and make you want to watch the movie. And that's exactly what Frozen 2 did for me. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go get my tickets and be the only 19 year old guy in the whole theater. Bye.